Hello, this is a short podcast on how to use RStudio to interact with R and RQTL. So I've gone to the internet and I did a search for RStudio and I did a download and install and now I have an RStudio window open. What you see over here is I have a console window on the left I have a workspace and history window on the top right, and I have a files, plots, packages, and help uh, window on the bottom bottom right. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up under tools, and I'm going to say I'm going to set my working directory. I'm going to come over here and say choose a directory, and I want to be on the desktop, and I have a uh, a folder called B6 times BTR data, so I'm going to click on that and say choose. Now um, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say open a file and in that folder there are three scripts, the BTBR script 1, 2, and 3 and I'm going to open script 1 and say open and it will now open it into a new window in the top left hand corner. Note that I can pull this window down and make it bigger. Um, I can on any window I can click on uh, the expand button and it'll expand it or I can click on the uh, hide button and it'll hide it or I can click on just the, the regular one again I can I can size these windows note by the way if you're using our studio sometimes when you try to plot some graphics your window won't your graphics window won't be big enough so you'll need to make that graphics window a little bit a little bit bigger if you get an error message that says something like plot is too large and you will need to to make that a little bit a little bit bigger. Okay, so what I want to do with this particular script is, uh, and I want to do this. And again, I can now, by the way, also go up here, open file, and say open script two. Okay, I can go up here and say open file, and I can open file script three and say okay. So I can have multiple scripts open at the same time, which is really quite nice. Okay, but I want to make sure that I'm on script number one, so that's script two. Let's make sure I'm on script number one. Where did it go? Did I close it there? Well, let's go ahead and just open it again just to make sure I have it. There it is. Okay. Yep, there it is. Okay, so there's script one. So um, there's a couple things I can do here. If I click on the word source, it will run the entire script. So if I click on source here, it'll run the entire uh, BTBR script, ISCB01 uh, script. But I don't want to do that in this particular case because I want to explore this script. So this is a, a well-documented script. This was generated by um, Gary Churchill. Uh, you see his initials there, GAC, up at the Jackson Lab. And it's a script that's uh, written to look at this BTBR EQTL data. So what I want to do is I want to run just parts of the script uh, individually. So I'm going to click on that line there and hit the word run and you'll see that it pops up in the console or I can highlight a couple commands at the same time and hit the run button and both of them will run. Okay, so you might want to and again you might want to expand this out a little bit, maybe close that a little bit, you know, give yourself a little bit more room to read. You can play with this depending on how much um, how much space you have. Okay, so I can click on again a line and I can load some particular data. So what you want to do to answer the questions that I've put together for you in the the activity is to run commands one line at a time. By the way, you I'd be a little careful about skipping ahead and running commands that are downstream, meaning commands that are later in the program because what the problem with that is that, that may, there may be some dependency up above that you need to, to use that. But again, you can also just run, you know, hit the source button and it'll run the entire script. You notice there you've got a stoplight there. You can click on that to stop running the script if it's uh, taking too long or doing whatever you think it's uh, doing here. Now it's starting to run a uh, QTL main scan uh, plot. So again, you need to give these scripts time to run um, and and run to completion because they will they will take a little bit of time. So um, you can also do all of this by hand in just plain old R, but it it is a significantly amount easier if you do this in R Studio 
And if you try to do this just using uh, the plain old R console. Uh, the other nice thing about this particular uh, piece of, of code, R Studio, that is, is that you uh, you're not dealing, you're not having to fight so much with windows all over the place. You don't have a window with your script in it and a window with your console in it. Uh, it's all here and all right available to you. You will see when I start generating some graphics, by the way, I'm going to let it run for just a second here uh, to wait for it to generate some graphics and you'll see why here in a minute. So just give me a second while it runs through some X chromosome permutations. By the way, while it's doing that, if you have things up here, commands that you want to add, you can simply add them in. If you want to comment them out, you can simply put a pound sign in front of it and that'll comment that out. Notice, by the way, that up here at the top of the screen, uh, it turned red, which means you've made changes to that script. And now you can go over here and you can click on the uh, picture of the floppy disk, which I think is funny because you guys don't know what a floppy disk is. Uh, but I can click on that and notice that the red turned in back into black so that's been saved. I'm going to get that because I do want that command and again I want to click on the little uh, floppy disk sign there um, to, uh, to, to save that file. It will prompt you at the end if uh, uh, you haven't saved something it will ask you do you want to save that file and of course you'll, you'll in all likelihood you'll say yes. Okay, so the purpose of the first activity that I give you, the first set of questions, is to get you comfortable with this script a little bit. And you might ask, why are we trying? Why am I trying to do that? Um, as we move into the case study, um, what I'm hoping you will be able to do is to modify some of these scripts to look at different types of data. I'm going to give you. A variety of different data sets. Uh, this particular data set is um, data that comes from the pancreas. It's, uh, you'll, you'll see there, it actually says right here, uh, we're looking at something called an islet ML ratio. So islet means the um, islets of Langerhans, that's the, the cells in the pancreas that produce insulin. So this is a diabetes and insulin uh, set of data. And um, let me go here to, uh, to the code. Uh, notice here, by the way, when you're downloading your files, notice that, okay, here's my folder called B6 times BTBR data, and, or you could just call it B6 times BTR. I have my three scripts there, and then in another folder called data, I have all my particular data sets, okay? So the data set that you're using for the first part is pancreas data. Um, I have some liver data. I have some microscopy data. I've got a variety of different data sets here uh, that we'll play with, particularly uh, we got liver total glyc um, um, triglyceride data. So I got a, a variety of different data sets. And probably in the case study, we're going to ask you to uh, pick one or one of these data sets and do something interesting with it. By the way, we do uh, have provided a readme text there file. So it tells you a little bit about uh, the kinds of things that are in there. Um, notice that there's a file called a line geno with PMAP R data and the name of this cross is going to be F2G. Okay, so that's going to be an important uh, data set that you're going to be using a fair amount. Okay, how are we doing with our runs here? It's still doing a run. And I can hear my fan running by the way, so uh, I don't, you can't see this, but in the background um, I've turned or I've turned off everything else on my computer. I've got Mathematica turned off. I got all the Microsoft stuff turned on and to try to save some memory here and even with that my my machine is running uh, pretty hot right now. Okay I'm gonna go ahead and 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 stop that. You should get the idea uh, when you get a there we go there's a graphic that showed up. Okay, I didn't quite finish but there's a graphic that showed up and notice up in the in the graphics window I do have an arrow so I can scroll back and scroll through pictures and try to see what they are. There's a main scan, there's a main scan, there's a histogram, there's a histogram, so there's a genetic map, so on and so forth. Okay, there's a plot that you're going to ask, you're going to need to say something about. And then I can come down and I can say, I can export these, I can save these plots as an images, okay, and I can give this thing a name and I can save it somewhere. And now if I go look at my folder, 
Okay, there's my B6 times BTR data. Let's close out there. And there's my scatter plot there that I just saved. I exported that as an image, and we're good to go. Okay, I hope this helps, and let me know what kinds of problems you have downloading the data, because I imagine that in and of itself is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Okay, we'll see you. Bye.